वेलकम बैक आई एम डॉक्टर शाहरियार हुसैन यू आर वाचिंग पार्ट थ्री ऑफ डेटा साइंस वर्कशॉप वन इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट वी डिस्कस्ड नाम पाई इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टार्ट टू डिस्कस पांडस एज आई वाज सेइंग द पांडस लाइब्रेरी फॉर पाइथन इज डिजाइंड फॉर डेटा प्रोसेसिंग एंड एनालिसिस यू कैन रीड डेटा फ्रॉम फाइल्स process the data and write to files using pandas we will see more utilization of pandas to analyze data when we will process data for machine learning algorithms today i will go over some quick examples of the basic data structures used in pandas the pandas library is built on top of numpy which we are already familiar with from the previous part In the description section of this video I will provide a link to the code I will write today. Again, I am using Google Colab because it is incredibly convenient for running workshops. Given that Google Colab is a cloud-based platform to run Python code. As I was saying, the Pandas library uses NumPy. I will import both NumPy and pandas i generally import numpy as np and pandas as pd these names np and pd are just names you could name them whatever names you think are convenient for you i will use these names to call functions relevant to numpy and pandas i will generate some random numbers Therefore I am importing the randn function from numpy.random This randn function will help me in generating some random numbers Now one thing is if you write code with me your random numbers will be different than the random numbers the program will generate here in my code That is obvious Sometimes it may become confusing to see a video where numbers are different than the numbers you are using. To solve this issue, I am writing this next line where I state that the random number generator has an initial state of 50. If you also include this line then whatever random number I will generate in this program your program will generate the same numbers that is you can use the same line with the value 50 to reseed the generator after reseeding if I generate a random number and you also generate a random number both the random numbers will be the same if I generate a second random number, it will be equal to your second random number, so and so forth. Let me create a 5 by 4 matrix of random numbers as an example. If you are writing code with me, you will see that you have the same random numbers. If I run this line again, I will see different numbers the second time. If you run this line a second time, you will have the same numbers as I have now on the screen. That is quite an interesting feature, isn't it? This seed function is quite good for testing purposes to reproduce the same random test data. Many machine learning algorithms have the seed function. To make sure that the initialization of the algorithm can start from the same state when required. For this matrix, I am running the line to reseed at 50. Then I am generating the numbers after reseeding. You will have the same matrix if you run this line first time after reseeding with 50. It is fine if you do not write this line. In that case, my random numbers will be different than your random numbers. The pandas library has two basic data structures, series and a data frame. A series is analogous to a one-dimensional array. A data frame is analogous to two-dimensional array. You can consider a data frame as an Excel sheet. 
where you have headers representing the names of the columns or even rows can have names. Let us directly create a data frame because a data frame is something that a data scientist frequently uses to keep data in the main memory. I will use this randomly generated data of five rows and four columns as my data in the data frame. PD is my pandas reference. I use PD dot data frame. The first parameter is the actual data part, which in this case is RADT or red T. I can tell my data frame that I have column names. I provide the column names as a list of strings. Each element in the list will contain a string representing the header name of the column. I will mention that this list represents the column names. So I write columns equal to this list of strings. I run this line to construct the respective data frame in variable df1. Now I want to see what we have in this data frame. I print df1. Notice that the four columns have a column header. So this data frame is like an Excel data table. The row indices 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are not a part of the actual data, but just row IDs provided by the data frame. We could even provide our own index identifiers in the parameter just like the column header. We could provide index equals a list of five elements as identifiers. The index list should ideally have five elements given that we have five rows in the data. For the sake of simplicity, I am not including row names or row identifiers. We just have column identifiers or column names. Hello1, Hello2, Hello3, and Hello4. Now let's say that we want to see only one column. Let's say I want to see the column that has the header Hello1. I use df1 and in square brackets I mention Hello1 in quotations, of course. The content of the column Hello1 is shown. The row indices are shown here too. If I need to access more than one column, so I will provide a list of column names that I want to see within this set of square brackets. That is, there will be two starting square brackets and two ending square brackets. Since I have provided a list of column names, those corresponding columns have been selected and displayed here. In this example, I have gathered the two columns hello1 and hello3. We have these two selected columns. Of course, we have the corresponding row indices in the display. Therefore, I selected a subset of the columns this way. I can even create a new column. Let's say that I want to create a new column named my new call. I will say df1 and then in square brackets I will put the name my new call then I will write the equal symbol. In the right side I will state what the content of this new column should be. Let us say that I want this new column to be the summation of hello1 column of df1 and hello2 column of df1.